Golfers, Eric Schulberg, TGS Golf Academy. Today we're going to talk about playing golf and how you should assess your game when you're out there and make changes, okay? This is where I want to talk to students that aren't uh, of the elite level that I teach that are really struggling with it. They're, they look for answers in their body or they look for these um, uh, fixes that aren't, I would say, helpful, okay? And I, I say that because you'll, you'll understand why when I get into this a little bit here that when we're, make, when we're on the golf course, we're out there to score, okay? We're not there to practice our swing, okay? We're there to figure out how to make adjustments if we need to, okay? Those adjustments need to be based on our ball flight. So therefore, where should we always start? With what we're doing to impact meeting our face angle, our club path, and if you just think about those two, this is gonna be the big fixes we make, okay? So I, I just have this little par three set up here. You can see this alignment stick going down here. That is my, that's my kind of target line, okay? So I'm gonna hit a shot here on purpose and talk about um, what what the fix would be and how we go about it, okay? So just, we're gonna go here. I always gotta kind of work on my takeaway. Okay, so I hit a shot right now that just started right on line, okay? And it's curving pretty good left and I just hit, uh, rolled back onto the fringe. So. I'm not gonna look at the numbers on what happened. I saw the ball flight, okay? I know from that, that I start, my face angle had to be pretty much where I was, where the ball started, where I aimed, right? So it's down my target line. Now, how would that ball move left? My path had to be going in to out. Now, how much? That is based on how much curvature there was. I would say there's quite a bit of curvature. I'm gonna put my path at like a four to five on track, man say okay four to five on track man with that I started online then that moved me so more than I wanted okay so yeah club path is five face angle was negative one instead of zero or one like I thought so now how do I fix that so let's say I need to hold the line more well I need to bring that club path down so it's not moving so much or get my face angle more open so I would like to think of it right now of more getting the path a little bit down and get the face angle a little bit more open too so it doesn't move as much as it did. Now, I'm on the, still on the left side of the green, okay? It's not like it's terrible, but we're gonna say, okay, let's try to fix this a little bit. So instead of a 5.2 path, I'm gonna try to get it more down to, you know, maybe a two or something, you know, more reasonable like that. So I'm gonna rehearse it and I want my club to be probably about a one, my face angle. So I want my face angle pointing more right down here, which is my target, or maybe even a tad right, one right there. And then I wanna have my path going just a tad right of it, okay? And that's gonna be what my fix is for this, okay? At least the tribe, right? Okay, now that wasn't my best like strike but as far as movement, I, I, I captured what I wanted, okay? Because that ball moved very little. It started on mine. I had a path of three, four, and a face round one something. So it, it was a good shot, except my contact was bad, okay? So I'm going to do this a little different now, because that's a good time to bring it up. Contact was bad, and I'm happy with my shot. And then we'll get back into the other curvature after that. This is what I'm going to suggest, okay? That we do a practice swing and figure out how do I land more in front of the ball, which I did there. So I'm thinking about how do I land somehow like three to four inches in front, like I just did there. And that's all I'm gonna think about on this next shot, because everything else was pretty good. I'm just thinking about how do I land three to four inches more in front. You hear that difference in that contact from the other one? Now that flight is going good. I mean, I crushed that one. I, that's towards the back of the green. Um, yeah, I, 90 miles per hour for me is pretty good with this. I can get up to about 93, but carried 182. So um, path and face were good on it. Now, that's uh, if we have problems with coming down in front, okay? What is going on? We are doing something to come down back here. Typically, it's trying to close the club face. Imagine a ball is right in front of me by going like this. And so think about this if you're playing baseball, okay? Everybody's had like a T-ball or somebody's had some, 
I can ask anybody to grab a bat and just swing like some baseball and they do it right, okay? We're gonna do that here right now while just wearing the club face up. I'm gonna open it, I'm gonna come through. Look at that. Look where that club face is. And look where my hands are. So what did I do? I twisted the club instead of this. So let me show you how weird this is. You're playing baseball, you're like, okay, I'm ready to hit. And you go, that's what it is. Look at it, that's casting. That's what most of you are doing playing golf. Or I go like this, go boom. And then look where I'm at. Hands way ahead there. But most golfers have their hands either at the ball or behind. So it would be exactly playing baseball. The first thing you do before your body move really was go like this. Because look, my body's still square. And that's where it is when we play, when, um, it's, that's where it is when we play golf. For the people like cast, they end up with their body pretty square at impact. Maybe a little open for some, but when you go and turn the shaft, look at my body opening already. Just like this. See how much different it is? It's a little tip, a little lesson in between our lesson on how to fix that. Quit casting it and learn to turn the shaft so you can get the hands way ahead and get this shaft closed. I think it's perfect to practice it up here, level first. It makes it much easier to feel what we're trying to do. Look where the hands end up, way ahead. And guess what? That's when you start crushing it because instead of hitting it with your loft like this, you take a, you take a seven iron turn into a six or five and a half because you're not hitting it like that, okay? So let's show the other example, which I have trouble hitting. We're gonna, we're gonna act, uh, we're, we're gonna miss it. I'm gonna show you how. And this is typically what people do. This is, this is a hard one for me to do. Okay. So that one, I started a little bit left of my target, okay? And it's curving off my target. Does that sound like a lot of people here? I, I know I see a lot of those people that do that. So that was great. That was a big old cut. So I started, I probably had a one or two degree left face angle. So that would just be a little left of my target. But I must have swung for that thing to move that much with a seven iron pretty far over to the left. My path, in order for it to move that much, had to be a pretty big path fix. Okay, so I'm, I don't know. I could have been negative six or seven, I would guess. Yeah, negative eight and face is negative 0.3. So that gave me that too much of movement over to the right. It started pretty much online, and that's when you're watching online, you're going, oh, you start it right, it's gone. What do I need to do to fix that, okay? Let's say I am a cutter. I cut the ball. Well, I would probably want to get rid of the negative eight, but let's say I can't then I need to get my face angle probably to a negative four. And that way it'll cut in perfect. So I need to get this ball started more left. I need to close the club face. So let's just say I'm gonna probably cut down on the path a little bit, but let's say this is here. This is my path. I want my face to be down here for the perfect draw, right in the middle of it, okay? So if I have a negative eight path to the left, you're over the top basically, then I'm gonna want a half of that, like negative four. Now, I think it's better to cut it down because once you get into the negative eights, and let's say you just hit a negative two at the base on accident, then you miss it too much. That's why it's better to get closer to neutral. So negative four is kind of, and five is kind of my line that I draw. So I wanna get a face that starts about here. And so what I'm gonna do is, I just hit that shot, so I need to probably rehearse it, right? And that's what the practice swing is for. It's to rehearse what you're trying to do next. Like with intent. Have you noticed every swing I've had has been with intent? I'm not working on any swing part. I'm like path and face. And some of you say may say I'm not ready for this yet. Yes, you are. If you just go do it. Because you can learn to manipulate your club. And that's what you should be practicing at the ring. Learn how to manipulate it. Okay? Now, I didn't get that started far enough left again, but it was more straight with less of a turn. So, I don't hit these shots that often, but if I were to work on it, I'd have to work on getting the face a little more closed at the same time, so I could get a curving bore over there um, and not be worried about starting left. So, that is basically the process that you wanna go through of analyzing your shots. And you never wanna hit a shot and be like, focus right on your body right away because we, what what would that do we need to look at the shot analyze what it did bring it back to path and face now here's the thing you might not know that you don't need to know these track numbers because I can look at this and say say this is my target line the L right and I hit it here I start it's, my ball starts here I'm, I'm sorry here okay so I know my face my face angle was right 
at impact, open, right? Now I gotta figure, what did the ball do? If it curved to the right, where was my path? My path was somewhere over here, and how much it curves tells me how big the path was over that way, okay? Now, if it barely curves at all, I know my path was really near it, a straight push or a straight pull, the path and, and, uh, and um, face are on top of each other. Now, this is where I hate to say this. <laughs> Things go off the rails when we get to a driver. Why is that? Because the driver has a face that's not straight, it's rounded. So you're gonna hit a toe on a driver, okay? If, let's say you hit off the toe, and that's gonna force the club to open, which puts gear effect spin on it, making it wanna curve to the left. So you may be uh, somebody who slices and you catch it on the toe. Well, that's actually gonna help you with the driver, okay? I'm not saying that's what you wanna do, but you'll hit a shot that you think is straight and good, but you just got helped out by that. The same thing is you can hit a great shot and you can hit it like on the heel of the club and that's gonna make it go to the right, okay? So it makes it hard to judge what happened with our shot, okay? So I focus, you're gonna focus mainly on these with your irons because it's easier at the beginning to detect. Eventually you can get to that where you can do it. Um, and also I wanna offer any of you that are into this and wanna know how to do it because this is the way to play golf. There's no other way. You have to analyze every shot and know what you did. How many people, one thing with my students when they play golf, if they ever walk off the course and call me and say, you know, I have no idea what went wrong. I'm always like, then something's really wrong with the teaching because you should know exactly what went, what went wrong on the golf course after a certain time we're together. And then they always do because you go through this process every time. But you know what it does, folks? It makes it easier. You're taking control of your golf game. And how cool is that? Like, no longer are you ever going to hit a shot and be like, I have no idea what I did. You know what I mean? Like, what's a top shot? It's somebody who has a low point back here and the club comes up. So they go low here and then up. I just topped it. Don't let somebody tell you you lifted your head. That doesn't make any sense. I've never seen it in 30 years, okay? Not one lesson I've seen where somebody top us. They come watch it. And they look at it and they go, oh my God, I'm staring at it. Still staring at it. Still staring at it. Still staring at it. No one's ever topped a ball because they picked their head up, folks. So let's let's just focus on what we can control. And guess what? It gives us power. This is power. We become in control. Are there certain days that you're not gonna be able to control it, what you do with it? Yeah, there are. There's gonna be a day you try to go left and get the face off better in, in shape, and you're not gonna be as good as other days with it. And you just aren't. And that's the that's the that is the game of the face and the issues we've run into with it. It's hard to stabilize it. That's why we work on so hard on not having a swing that goes like this, because this is very hard to play good golf ever like this. Now, you may know some of you can score really well like that, but I guarantee they can also score really bad like that too. Okay, so they do this, this is like that stop. Instead of somebody who can get real consistent, they learn to go like this. You don't see any pro ever go like this. They don't have their hands behind. Every one of them goes like this. Why? Because watch the club face. Look at the stability of that. Or do you want this? Which one do you want? <laughs> you know, so one of them, the body's moving, stabilizing. The other one, the body stops, boop, it goes flying fast. I know which one you guys want. So that's why we work on that during practice of trying to get the club more on closed down here instead of open. Because if it's open here, you have to stop. You have no choice. If I come in here in my swing too, and I'm like this open like most golfers, I have to stop and do that. It's the only way for me to get it started near on target. If I were to do shaffling, that thing's gonna go way over there. Okay, so you need to learn to get it down here with what we were talking about, the baseball drill, twisting the shaft like that, and then you're gonna have full control of this, okay? Folks, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions on the comments. Subscribe to the channel, it'd be awesome. And send me a message or leave it in the notes if you want me to uh, send you a chart so you can really just look at this and figure it out and. You don't need a track man and I'll, I'll help walk you through it. Uh, this is gonna be a game changer for anyone besides both of us. Thanks for watching, Eric Schulberg, EJS Golf.